Today we're going to be talking about how to find the tangent line to the polar curve at the given point. And in this particular problem, we've been given the polar curve r equals cosine of 2 theta, and we've been asked to find the tangent line to that curve at the point theta equals pi over 4. Now I've written a couple of formulas here to remind us what we need to do. The first one we're going to look at is the point slope form of the equation of the line, which is what we're going to use to find the equation of the tangent line. And remember that in this formula we have m, which is the slope, and we have x sub 1 and y sub 1, which come from the point of intersection of the tangent line and the curve. So these are the things that we're going to need to be working toward. The first thing we're going to find is m, and then after we found m, we'll find the coordinate point x sub 1, y sub 1. Now it's important to realize that this formula for the equation of the tangent line is in Cartesian coordinates, right? We have x's and y's, but we're starting from a polar curve, which is in terms of r's and thetas. So we're going to need to transition our problem, basically, from r's and thetas to x's and y's. And we're going to need to do that first with the slope m, and then with the point x sub 1, y sub 1. So let's start with finding the slope. The formula that we use to find the slope can be one of two formulas, either this formula for dy over dx, which takes the derivative of y with respect to theta and x with respect to theta, or we can use this second formula for dy dx, which is all in terms of polar coordinates. Notice we have all r's and thetas here. This second formula for the slope m is actually derived from the first one, and it's so quick to do that I want to show you how to do it, so that if you want to just memorize this smaller, easier formula, you can get to the second point from the first one. So basically this is saying the derivative of y with respect to x we're going to need the derivative of y with respect to theta. Well, we don't yet have an equation for y in terms of theta, so we need to make one. And that's where these two formulas come in here. This is how we convert from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. We say that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. So if we want an equation for y, all we do is say y is equal to, and we plug in here for r. So because we have r in both of these equations here, we're going to get that directly from our polar equation that we were given here, and this value for r of cosine of 2 theta goes directly into this spot right here. So our equation for y then becomes cosine of 2 theta, we plug that in, times sine of theta, which we get from this equation. So sine of theta. So we have y equals cosine 2 theta sine of theta. Same thing for x here. If we say x is equal to, again we plug in cosine of 2 theta times cosine of theta. Now we have an equation for y and x that are in terms of theta, so we can take the derivative of y with respect to theta and the derivative of x with respect to theta. So let's go ahead and do that and you'll see this second formula here emerge. So if we say dy over dx, the derivative of y with respect to x, in the numerator we'll take the derivative of this equation for y in terms of theta. In order to do that, we're going to need product rule, where we call cosine of 2 theta one function and sine of theta the other function. So remember that product rule tells us to take the derivative of one of these. So the derivative of cosine of 2 theta is negative 2 sine of 2 theta. We use chain rule to get this 2 out in front here. We take the derivative of cosine and we get negative sine. We leave the 2 theta alone, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, so we multiply by that 2. That's how we get the negative 2 sine of 2 theta. And then we multiply that by sine of theta, this one right here, we leave that alone. But then we have to add to that the opposite situation. So this time we leave cosine of 2 theta alone, and we multiply by the derivative of sine of theta, which is cosine of theta. Then in the denominator here, according to our formula, we're going to take the derivative of x with respect to theta. So this time cosine of 2 theta times cosine of theta. Again, we'll use product rule. We already know that the derivative of cosine of 2 theta is negative 2 sine of 2 theta. We multiply by cosine of theta, and then we do the opposite situation. This time we leave cosine of 2 theta alone and we multiply by the derivative of cosine of theta, which is negative sine of theta. 
And as you can see now, the formula, the second formula here, is starting to emerge. Notice we have this cosine of theta at the end here. We have cosine of theta at the end here. That's multiplied by r, which we know is cosine of 2 theta. And here's our r, cosine of 2 theta. We have sine of theta right here. So that's sine of theta there. And then the derivative of r with respect to theta, in other words, the derivative of our polar equation, which we already know is negative 2 sine of 2 theta. So we have that there in the numerator. And you'll see the same pattern in the denominator. The derivative of our original polar function, dr d theta, times cosine of theta, which we have here, minus, we have our minus sign here, r, which we know is cosine of 2 theta, times sine of theta. So you see that our equation now for the derivative matches up to this other equation. So whatever is easier for you to memorize this one, create the equations for y and x, and then use this formula, or just take the derivative of r with respect to theta and plug that into this equation, memorizing the rest of this. You can do it either way. So now that we've got an equation for dy over dx, what we want to do is plug in the point theta equals pi over 4 for pi here, and that'll give us a value for m. So what we're going to do is plug in pi over 4, and we'll get negative 2 times sine of 2 theta. Well, when we plug in pi over 4 for theta, we'll get 2 times pi over 4, which will give us pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is just 1, so that's what we'll get there. And then sine of theta, sine of pi over 4, if you check out your unit circle, you know that sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2, so we'll get that. Then we'll say plus cosine of 2 theta, again, plugging in pi over 4 times 2, we get pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so that's what we're going to get there. And then cosine of theta, cosine of pi over 4, is again square root 2 over 2. Now if we evaluate the denominator, you'll notice we'll get something very similar. We have our negative 2 here. We already know sine of 2 theta is 1. We already know cosine of theta is root 2 over 2. We already know cosine of 2 theta is 0. And we already know that sine of theta is root 2 over 2, so we'll just get negative root 2 over 2. And as you can see, we'll obviously get these to cancel here because they're both multiplied by 0. And then we're just left with what's in front, which we could simplify, but notice we have exactly the same thing in the numerator and the denominator, so this is just going to simplify to 1. If that looks a little confusing to you because you're not sure, you can still multiply it out, and what you'll see is that you get negative root 2 over negative root 2, which is going to be equal to 1. So 1 is our slope m. Now remember that m is in terms of Cartesian coordinates. Now we just need to find the Cartesian coordinate point x sub 1, y sub 1, so that we can plug both of those things into the formula for the equation of the tangent line. In order to do that, we'll need to do this in two steps. The first step is to plug the point we've been given, theta, into our original polar equation, r equals cosine of 2 theta. When we do that, we'll get r equals cosine of 2 times pi over 4. That'll obviously simplify to cosine of pi over 2. Now when we evaluate cosine of pi over 2, we see that r is equal to 0 because cosine of pi over 2 equals 0. Now that we have values for r and theta, we can go ahead and plug them into these equations here for x and y to get a Cartesian coordinate point instead of a polar coordinate point. So when we do that, we'll get x equals, we'll plug in r and we get 0 times cosine of pi over 4, which is obviously going to give us 0. And when we plug it in to the equation for y, we get y equals 0 times sine of pi over 4 which is going to give us 0 again, so now we know that our Cartesian coordinate point is the point 0, 0. Now we have a value for m and a point, so we can take both of those and plug them in to the point slope form of the equation of the tangent line. When we do that, we'll get y minus 0 is equal to 1, the slope, times x minus 0. And when we simplify, we see that we get y is equal to x. And y equals x is in fact the equation of the tangent line to this polar curve at the angle pi over 4. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.